With respect to pH one, it is basically the full name of the condition is primary hyperxaluria type one. It is an ultra rare disease um, where there is basically a metabolic defect in the liver where a specific enzyme, AGT or alanine glyoxylate aminotransferase is either deficient or defective, which results in an overproduction of hepatic oxalate. That oxalate combines with calcium to form calcium oxalate crystals that over time results in kidney stones and nephrocalcinosis and progressive renal insufficiency. Majority of the patients um, will progress towards renal insufficiency and re require intense hemodialysis and potentially a dual liver kidney transplant. Currently, uh, to your question specifically, there are no approved therapies for patients with PH1, and the only options that they have are hypohydration, and if they do progress uh, to renal failure, they require intense dialysis, and then the only curative option is a dual transplant, which of course is associated with a high degree of morbidity and mortality. Yeah, so we have deliberately designed a comprehensive clinical trial program for PH1 with our program with Lumasran. <clears throat> now, Lumasran is exquisitely designed uh, to uh, have a, an impact on patients with PH1 because it the mechanism of action of the drug is it works upstream of the metabolic defect in the enzyme pathway that I mentioned. And so it's exquisitely designed just for pH1, which constitutes a majority of the primary hypoxylurias. There are three types of primary hypoxylurias, one, two, and three. Uh, so Lamaswen targets specifically pH1, which constitutes about 80% of the cases of primary hypoxyluria. Our clinical trial, as I mentioned, clinical trials, as I mentioned, are comprehensive. We have three specific studies that addresses specific patient populations within the PH1 patient pool. Uh, Illuminate A is our pivotal placebo controlled trial that included patients that were greater than six years of age with an estimated glomerular filtration rate, which is a reflection of kidney function of greater than 30 mils per minute. So these patients had relatively preserved renal function. And we have tremendous data there with respect to the effect of lumasran meeting its primary endpoint and all tested secondary endpoints. In addition to that, in that particular study, we have shown very nicely a reduction in renal stone events as well as an improvement in nephrocalcinosis. The second study is Illuminate B, uh, which is an open label phase three clinical trial which included patients that all patients received lumasaran and all patients were less than six years of age. They were very young children as well as infants. As a matter of fact, we enrolled children as young as three months of age in that particular study. So very young children and infants. And here we basically personalized the dose for the particular patient population based on patient's body weight. Of course, we wanna make sure that you have a safety profile and an efficacy profile that is going to be robust, uh, especially for very young children. So earlier this month at the American Society of Nephrology meeting, we showed data from Illuminate B, which were very consistent with Illuminate A in terms of the percent reduction of urinary oxalate, which was clinically significant, in addition to meeting secondary endpoints. And here too, we showed an improvement in nephrocalcinosis in this very young patient population. And then lastly, we have the third trial, Illuminate C. And Illuminate C includes patients with severe disease. So it includes patients that have an estimated glomerular filtration rate less than 30 mils per minute, including patients that are dialysis dependent. And that particular trial is currently ongoing and we anticipate that we will complete enrollment by the end of this year. And we will have results in 2021. So in summary, we have three studies that will address the full spectrum of patients with PH1 across ages, as well as across severity of disease.